Catherine II, or Catherine the Great, was Russia's empress for almost 30 years after deposing her husband Peter III. Catherine II, she was born in Prussia in 1729 and married into the Russian royal family in 1745. Catherine became Empress of Russia in 1762, shortly after her husband Peter III rose to the throne. Catherine was known for her love liaisons, but she also attempted to modernize Russian culture via innovative arts and education policies. She died in 1796 after almost 30 years as Russia's Supreme Queen. Mother Tubian German Princess As a minor German princess, Catherine II Sophie Friederike August grew raised in Stettin, in the Anhalt Zebst Principality. Her father, Christian August, a prince of this minor kingdom, was a commander under Frederick William I of Prussia. The Princess of Holstein Gottorp, Catherine's mother, showed little interest in her. Joanne instead focused on Catherine's younger brother, Wilhelm Christian, leaving Catherine to her governess, Babette. After Wilhelm Christian died at the age of 12, Joanna saw her daughter as a way to better her own condition. Joanna visited other royal palaces in the vicinity to find potential mates with Catherine. To escape her overbearing mother, Catherine considered marriage as an option. A military priest taught Catherine religious subjects, although she questioned most of it. She also acquired three languages, German, French, and Russian, which came in useful when Catherine's mother invited Elizabeth of Russia to St. Petersburg. The Russian royal family. Elizabeth had been betrothed to Johanna's elder brother, who died of smallpox, and she felt a connection to Johanna's family. She wanted to test Catherine for her heir, Peter. When Catherine became sick, Elizabeth insisted on plenty of bloodlettings. After Johanna's recuperation, Catherine ingratiated herself with the Russian Empress. Despite her deeply Lutheran father's objections, Catherine married Grand Duke Peter and became a Russian Orthodox Christian. Her new faith gave her a new name, Yekaterina, or Catherine. Wife and heir, Peter, Grand Duke of Russia, on August 21, 1745. But Peter was immature and infantile, preferring to play with toy soldiers and mistresses than be with his wife. Catherine II had her own interests, which included reading. Catherine II eventually had a son, Paul, on September 20, 1754, after years of infertility. Some researchers think Paul's father was Sergei Soltikov, a Russian aristocrat and member of the court, while others argue Paul's similarity to Peter proves they were connected. On the other hand, Catherine had little time with her firstborn son, so Elizabeth adopted him. Catherine had three more kids. Russian Empress The Empress Consort of Russia was Catherine II when her husband Peter III succeeded his aunt Elizabeth of Russia on December 25, 1761. On July 9, 1762, Catherine became Empress of Russia after orchestrating a coup that caused Peter to abdicate after just six months. Peter had also enraged the Orthodox Church by stealing their properties, in addition to alienating other nobility, bureaucrats, and military personnel. Catherine II colluded with her boyfriend, Russian Lieutenant Gregory Orlov, and other important men to exploit unhappiness with Peter to generate support for his removal. Prior to his accession, Peter was openly harsh to his wife and contemplating displacing her to govern with his lover. He was killed a few days later in Ropshire, one of Peter's properties, by Catherine's co-conspirators. The Empress' participation in her husband's death is uncertain. Early Catherine II Early in her rule, Catherine attempted to please the soldiers and the church. She recalled Peter's troops sent to fight Denmark and rewarded those who backed her as Empress. A religious skeptic, she restored the church's land and goods stolen by Peter, however she eventually reversed direction, establishing the church a governmental entity. Catherine modeled herself like the revered Emperor Peter the Great, claiming to be his successor. To honor him, she commissioned the bronze horseman sculpture. Reforms and knackers Despite her belief in ultimate power, Catherine attempted social and political change. 
abolishing death penalty and torturing, she drafted the Knackers, which proclaimed every man equal. Catherine also worked to help the country's serfs, laborers held by landlords for life. The Senate opposed any change to the feudal structure. After completing the Knackers, Catherine formed the Legislative Commission, which convened for the first time in 1767. No legislation came out of the committee, but it was the first time Russians from all around the empire could voice their concerns. Their theories became more famous than its immediate effect. Arts education Many Europeans thought Russia was primitive and provincial when Catherine became empress. She hoped to transform attitudes by promoting education and the arts. Catherine founded a boarding school for rich girls in St. Petersburg and subsequently campaigned for free schools in other Russian cities. Catherine was an avid supporter of the arts. She created an opera and ballet theater in St. Petersburg, and penned several librettos. She was also an avid art collector, whose works were presented at the Hermitage in St. Petersburg. Catherine was an ardent reader who favored Enlightenment thinkers and authors. She corresponded with Voltaire and met with Denis Diderot in Russia. Diderot gave the Empress the moniker Catherine the Great. Catherine, a self-confessed literary aspirant, also penned a memoir. The Diplomacy and Military Russia's frontiers grew under Catherine's reign. A few years previously, she had put her old lover, Polish Count Stanislaw Poniatowski, on the Polish throne. The fundamental issue between Russia and Poland was the treatment of Orthodox Russians in the East. Catherine handed Prussia and Austria sections of Poland in 1772, while keeping the East. As a result, Russia and Turkey engaged in combat. Catherine proved Russia's strength in 1769 and 1770, with multiple triumphs. In 1774, she signed a peace deal with the Ottoman Empire, gaining additional areas and a foothold in the Black Sea. Gregory Potemkin, a battle hero, became Catherine's counselor and lover. In her honor, he established towns and cities and expanded the country's fleet. On the Crimean Peninsula in 1783, Potemkin advised Catherine to strengthen Russia's position in the Black Sea. Catherine fought the Ottoman Empire again a few years later. From 1787 through 1792, the two nations fought. Rule 2 with the Charter of the Nobility in 1785, Catherine reversed her policies and increased upper-class control, forcing many subjects into brutal serfdom. Catherine had ruled Russia for many decades by the mid-1790s. Her power strained her relationship with her son and heir, Paul, but she adored her grandchildren, especially Alexander. Catherine's intellect and soul remained lively into her old age. Love Life Catherine II's love life has been the subject of considerable conjecture. Despite the claims of bestiality, the Empress had several romances throughout her reign. Catherine couldn't remarry when her husband died for fear of losing her status, so she had to seem chaste in public. But she had a strong sexual urge behind the scenes. Most sources say Catherine had 12 partners throughout her lifetime. She had a system for winning people's favor by giving them gifts, honors, and titles. Catherine always managed to get her new lover out of her hair after a breakup. Potemkin, her most major lover, remained a longtime friend when their emotions cooled. Life and Death Catherine was found unconscious on her bathroom floor in November 1796. It was first assumed she had a stroke. Russian Empress Catherine survived until the next night, but never recovered consciousness. She died in 1796. Her body was entombed in the Winter Palace beside her late husband, Peter III. Her son, Paul, had his father's ashes interred there, providing Peter III the burial rites he had not received following his murder. Catherine II and Peter III were buried in St. Peter and Paul Cathedral. Catherine's love relationships are generally remembered more than her achievements. A majority of Russians were serfs, and historians condemned her for not improving their conditions. Catherine brought forth educational changes and promoted the arts in Russia. 
Catherine expanded the country's frontiers via military and diplomatic force.